Hello, everyone. So when I introduce the principles of connected learning to educator colleagues of mine, I often find myself referring them to them as a return to Dewey, just this time with powerful networked and digital tools. Um, and in these conversations, we often use or invoke metaphors. And I've been looking for one for myself that really connects what I think is powerful about these principles and really shifts some of our old ideas of learning and knowledge acquisition. For me, increasingly, that metaphor is that of the rhizome. If you dig into the rhizome at all, um, you'll quickly get to a thousand plateaus by French philosophers Deleuze and Guattari. In that tome of a book, they write these crazy descriptions of rhizomic activity like, when Glenn Gould speeds up the performance of a piece, he's transforming the musical points into lines. He's making the whole piece proliferate. The pink panther imitates nothing, they say. It reproduces nothing. It paints the world its color, pink on pink. This is its becoming world, its own line of flight. But really, what is a rhizome? Bulbs and tubers are rhizomes, they tell us. And much like the nodes of a network, a rhizome connects any point to any other point, And those aren't all necessarily of the same nature. In contrast to centered systems, uh, rhizomes are acentered. They're non-hierarchical, non-signifying. Subtract the unique from the multiplicity. A uh, system of that kind, they say, is a rhizome. This photograph here by Ben Harvey shows what he can accomplish in the rhizomic activity when he follows his own line of flight and then shares it with us at youthvoices.net. Dave Cormier has written a lot about the rhizome in learning, and he argues that the metaphor really helps us to see curriculum being made in real time by the activities of learners themselves engaged in that process. Ina Siminski also talks about the rhizome, and she takes us back to Dewey. Um, she talks about the thickening of life, or she quotes Dewey in talking about the thickening of life through creative experience. And it's also my experience in participatory parade and pageantry work that I do in Philadelphia that life gets really thick like this and that the curriculum is made all along the way in unexpected and unusual and exciting turns. I also see this when I study youthvoices.net where students like Ben the photographer uh, dig into their passions and then work right alongside their teachers to practice um, skills as connected learners and as writers. I've also experienced it in teacher professional development where colleagues of mine at the Writing Project CoLab um, use inquiry-based responsive design processes to explore, envision, and enact their work together. The metaphor of the rhizome, I think, helps us see what we might not see otherwise. It makes the adjacent possible visible to us so that we can foster and develop it. Right now, too, in Colorado, um, educators working there are exploring making, hacking, and playing. And they talk about the rhizomic connections that are being made between youth, community members, teachers, pre-service, and in-service teachers. And then they go and share this work at NWP's Digital Is website so that other educators can see what they're doing and they can connect in this dynamic dialectic ecosystem um, of the web. Want to see a movie? This first grader asks. Uh, May and her classmates documented their entire first year um, experience and created little mini documentaries of their work. Uh, their teacher, Lacey Manship, shares their documentaries and this well-loved camera on NWB's Digital Is website. She says that when, with content like these and um, this kind of rich student content, teachers and students can socially assess their learning together. Chad Sansing tirelessly advocates for schools and classrooms and communities where kids can do just this. He calls for um, openly networked, um, rhizomically connected classrooms that empower students to change them. 
More passions. Oops, this way. More passions is the answer, not fewer. That's what Dewey says. Can the rhizome help us to find the ways? <laughs>